Just give us a minute while we confirm that the streaming uh, is working properly. Uh, Sergeant, can you please start your recording? Computer recording rolling. The recording to the cloud is rolling and the backup recording is working properly. Good morning. Welcome to the New York City Council's remote subcommittee hearing on landmarks, public sightings and dispositions. Everyone, please turn on your video at this time. Silence all electronic devices. All written testimony can be submitted to land use testimony at council Dot NYC .gov. Again, that is land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. Thank you. Chairman Riley, we are ready to begin. Good morning. I am Councilmember Kevin Riley, Chair of the Subcommittee on Landmarks, Public Sightings, and Dispositions. I am joined today by my colleagues, Councilmember Kuhl, Councilmember Miller, and Councilmember Traeger. We will begin with votes on two projects laid over from our last meeting. We will vote to approve LUs 897 and 898 for the Wind Powers Project, approving the designation of the Urban Development Action Area and Urban Development Action Area Project for such area, the disposition of city-owned property to a developer of HPD's choosing, and a special permit per pursuant to Section 74 dash 903 of the New York City Zoning Resolution to modify the requirements of the ZR section 24-111 to allow an increase in permitted floor area ratio for use group three nonprofit use while sleeping accommodations for 2.43 FAR to 4.8 FAR. These actions will facilitate the redevelopment of city owned property located at 346 Powers Avenue, Block 2572, Lot 6 in the Bronx with two new community facility buildings, including a permanent supportive housing facility containing 221 units for families with children and an off-site daycare center and a new homeless shelter building with 95 units. This project is located within the Bronx City Council District represented by Council Member Ayala. We will also approve LU number 881 related to the Las Riasas project submitted by HPD pursuant to section 197-C of the New York City Charter. This application requests approval of the disposition of city owned property located at 303 East 102, Street, um, 102nd Street, excuse me, block 1674, lot 104. Also 338 East 117th Street, block, 16, block 1688, lot 34, 505-507 East 118th Street, block 1815, lots 5 and 6, 1761-1763 Park Avenue, block 1771, lots 1 and 2. This disposition approval was facilitate the development and construction of four new affordable rental development containing approximately 81 affordable dwelling units and community facility space in the districts represented by council member Perkins and Ayala. We will now vote to approve LU 897 and 898 and 881. Council, please call the roll. Chair Riley. I don't know. Councilmember Ku. I don't know. No. Councilmember Miller. Councilmember Miller, you're muted. Councilmember Traeger. I vote aye. Councilmember Miller able to respond? By a vote of three in the affirmative, 
with zero in the negative and with zero abstentions, the items are recommended to the full land use committee. We will hold the vote open for Council Member Miller and we expect Council Member Barron to join us shortly. Thank you, Council. I now recognize Council to explain today's hearing procedures. Thank you, Chair Riley. I'm Jeffrey Campania, Council to this subcommittee. Members of the public who wish to testify were asked to register for today's hearing. If you registered to testify and are not yet signed into Zoom, please sign in now and remain signed in until after you have testified. If you wish to testify and have not registered, please go to www.council.nyc.gov slash land use to sign up now. If you are not planning to testify on today's items, please watch the hearing on the New York City Council website. All people testifying before the subcommittee will be on mute until they are recognized to testify. Please confirm that your mic is unmuted before you begin speaking. Public testimony will be limited to two minutes per witness. If you have written testimony you would like the subcommittee to consider in addition to or in lieu of appearing before the subcommittee, or if you require an accessible version of a presentation given at today's meeting, please email landusetestimony at council.nyc.gov. Please indicate the LU number or project name in the subject line of the email. During the hearing, council members who would like to ask questions should use the Zoom raise hand function. The raise hand button should appear at the bottom of the participant panel. I will announce council members who have questions in the order they raise their hands. Witnesses are reminded to remain in the meeting until they are excused by the chair. Lastly, there may be ex extended pauses if we encounter technical problems. We ask that you please be patient as we work through these issues. Chair Riley will now continue with today's agenda. Next, thank you, Council. Next, I open the public hearing on LU922, the Bedford Stuyvesant East and Weeksville Mosaic Project. HPD seeks approval of an urban development action area project and a real property tax exemption pursuant to Section 577 of the Article 11 of the Private Housing Finance Law for 13 city owned properties and one privately owned property in the Bedford Stuyvesant and Weeksville neighborhood of Brooklyn, collectively project area. The proposed action will facilitate the development of 46 affordable cooperative home ownership units under HPD's whole open door program. The properties are located in Brooklyn districts represented by council member Carnegie and Ampre council member Ampre Samuels. And let me just, don't have them here. Presented for the applicants, we have Makita Marshall Nesmith, Lin Zhang, Elise Friedman, and Joyce Kwan from HPD, and Rick Fudge, Juliana Bernal Ginnan, and Catrell Lewis from H from excuse me, from Habitat for Humanity. I now ask that these witnesses be unmuted and the council administer the affirmation. We'll wait a minute for all the witnesses to come on screen and to unmute themselves. Please unmute yourselves. Please raise your right hands and one by one state your names. Hi, Makita Marshall Neesmith. Hi, Lin Zhang. Hi, Alice Friedman. Hi, Juliana Bernal Guinan. Hi, Richard Fudge. You affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this subcommittee and an answer to all council member questions. Yes, I do. I yes, do. I do. I do. Thank you. You may begin your presentation. Sorry, is it up on the screen? Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Makita Marshall Neesmith, and I'm a Brooklyn planner from New York City Department of Housing Preservation and Development. And I, and I am here to talk to you today about Mosaic, also known as bed East and Weeksville Mosaic. Next slide, please. Mosaic is an accelerated UDAP project comprised of small scattered sites currently on vacant, underutilized lots. Habitat for Humanity is the project sponsor. 
Habitat was designated through the NIHOP NCP RFP released in 2016. The goal of this RFP was to develop some of our most difficult sites, smaller and or irregular lots, some of which are infill. This project will create attractive contextual infill buildings that will beautify the blocks by filling in the gaps. These sites will further the, se the security and safety of the, of the neighborhoods and improve the overall streetscape. Mosaic is a part of a larger scat scattered site project, bed East in Leedsville. Mosaic is an HPD open door project comprised of all co-op home ownership units and will be included in the Interborough Community Land Trust. This project spans community districts three, eight, and 16, and is located in council districts 41 and 36. I will now introduce Rich Rudge, who is a project manager from Habitat to further describe this project. Hello, this is Rick. Um, we can move on to the next slide, please. So Habitat for Humanity New York City and Westchester is a nonprofit affordable housing developer working in the five boroughs in Westchester County. We focus on home ownership for first time home buyers who contribute sweat equity by working on construction sites in limited capacities or in our office. Uh, we work on a variety of projects, including multifamily new construction, single family new construction, as well as the rehabilitation and preservation of existing homes. And here are a few of our um, recent featured projects. Can we go on to the next slide, please? Uh, the Mosaic Project is a scattered site project located in the Bedford, Stuyvesant, Weeksville, and Brownsville neighborhoods. Uh, the context of the sites is largely two to four story residential buildings um, with some typical infill sites um, is on the, on the right side of the screen there. Can go to the next slide, please. There are 14 sites total, 13 of which are currently city owned and one of which is um, privately owned by Habitat already at 249 and Hart Street. The buildings uh, will range in size from two to four units with units ranging from one to three bedrooms. Um, as Makita mentioned, they will be cooperatives. There will be 46 units total uh, grouped into two cooperatives um, by geographic proximity with some sample renderings of the building types on the right. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the apartments will range from one to three bedrooms weighted towards the larger sizes, about 82% of units being two and three bedrooms. Estimated sales prices will range from 210 to $310,000 which represents a discount to market of um, about 48 to 80% of market price, depending on the location. And next slide, please. The buildings will be placed on the Interborough Community Land Trust, which is a nonprofit community-based organization created to ensure the stewardship of permanently affordable housing. Um, the way it works is that the co-op will own the buildings and the community land trust will own the land with a ground lease between the two. The homes on the CLT will have resale price restrictions that will keep the homes affordable for generations. Um, in exchange, the CLT supports homeowners with financial counseling, direct financial support if necessary, and property tax exemptions, among other benefits. Um, and CLT homes across the country have been shown to experience lower rates of foreclosure and increased stability relative to non-CLT homes. Next slide, please. Um, we expect to close on our construction loan uh, in early next year, with construction beginning immediately afterwards. Um, we anticipate about a 30-month construction period. We'll begin home buyer selection um, about six months before construction ends, with home buyer closings beginning right after construction ends. We expect project closeout to occur early 2025. Next slide, please. So in summary, um, Mosaic is being developed by a mission-driven development partner with long-standing experience working with the city. There will be 46 affordable home ownership units developed on vacant, underutilized city and privately owned land. More than 80% of the total units are two to three bedroom family size units. They will be available to individuals and families from a range of incomes to about 90% AMI. Um, They're being designed as contextual buildings that reflect the scale and materiality of the surrounding areas. Amenities will include washers and dryers in the units, rear yard access, as well as energy efficient design that will lower utility costs. And they'll be placed within a cooperative structure 
and on the Interborough Community Land Trust to ensure long-term affordability. Uh, thank you. Oh, that was the end of the presentation, Rick? Yep, yep, that's the presentation. Thank you. Uh, Council, do you want to see if uh, Council Member Miller wants to give his vote before we continue? Council Member Miller, we missed your vote on LUs 897, 898, and 881. Uh, if you would like to cast your vote now. Um, vote aye. Thank you. Vote stands at four in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and with zero abstentions and remains open. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Councilor. Uh, and thank you to the applicant panel. I just have uh, two questions. It seems like a very uh, a real beautiful project. Uh, my wife's family is from bed so I'm really happy that um, we're, we're talking about home ownership and cooperative opportunities for the community. Um, just real quick, uh, how do the pro projected sale prices of these units compare to the market rate condos or co-ops in the area? So they, depending on the particular site in the neighborhood, they are, um, the estimated sales prices will come in at 48 to 80% of market rate prices. Okay. And was there any consideration for including ground floor commercial or community facility spaces um, in any of the sites being developed? I don't believe so. Um, Juliana, would you like to weigh in on this? Uh, sure. Uh, due to the size of the buildings, we wanted to prioritize the number of units, residential units in the building. So we focused on only residence, residential units in these buildings, no commercial or community. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for your testimony. Um, I don't see any council member with any questions. Uh, so uh, this panel may be excused. Thank you and you enjoy the rest of your week. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Council, are there any members of the public who wish to testify on LU 922? Council Member Riley? Yo, oh, Council Member Miller, I did not see your hand raised. Did you have a question? Uh, it, it, yeah, it, it got up a little late. Yeah. What, what was your question? We can get to your um, answer. Could, could, could someone speak to the long-term affordability as it relates to the land trust and, and, and what that looks like, how that would work? Okay. Well, we'll uh, get the question over. Oh, there you go. Uh, Rick, would you... All right, Councilmember Miller, can you repeat your question again for Rick? Yep. Um, the question is related to the long-term affordability as it relates to the land trust, um, how that procedure would work and the impact on communities as it moves forward. So the homes um, will be, there will be a, a ground lease that lasts for 99 years and it can re be renewed. And as part of the ground lease, there are resale price restrictions. Um, so the whatever the initial price is that the home buyer purchases at, um, the allowable resale price increases by 2% compounding year by year. Um, so the, uh, and it can be up to that maximum price. Mm, a maximum price of what? So 2% per year after... How many years? Each year. So whatever the initial sales price is, the maximum uh -huh. resale price moving forward increases by 2% every year, compounding. Is, is, is there a point for which uh, that, is there a limit to which, say for instance, can you sell the house before five or 10 years? Um, the ground lease doesn't restrict when that can happen. Okay, and and so at, at that point you you can increase by two percent, twenty percent after ten years, uh, and so forth, right? And it maxes out at what? Uh, there's not a maximum. It will just increase at two percent every year. 
assuming that the market rate supports that price. Okay, it, it, that makes sense considering those areas are, you know, if they're coming in at 43%, those um, right now market rate is very high in those communities. So makes sense around affordability. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Riley. Appreciate you. No problem, Councilmember Miller. And uh, Chair Riley, I just want to make you aware that Councilmember Barron has joined us. Okay. Good morning, uh, Councilmember Miller. Councilmember Barron, uh, how morning. do you vote? Good morning. How do you vote on yes, um, wind powers, which is 897 and 898, and Las Raices, which is LU 881? On 897 and 898, I vote no. On land use 881, I vote aye. And is 992, 922 also up for vote? No, we've just been hearing that item right now. Okay, thank you very much. So the vote stands at for Las Raices, which is uh, LU881, five in the affirmative, zero in the negative and zero abstentions, and wind powers, which is LUs 897 and 898, is four in the affirmative, one in the negative and zero abstentions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Council Member Barron. Um, Council, are there any members of the public who wish to testify on LU 922? There are no members of the public signed up to testify on this item. Any other members of the public who wish to testify on LU 922 should make themselves known now by raising the raise hand button. Uh, Council, you said no, no one uh, raised their hand, correct? There are, there are no members of the public. All right. Uh, with Thank you. Uh, seeing no other members of the public who wish to testify on this item, the public hearing on LU-922 is now closed and the item is laid over. Uh, Council, can we close the vote on? The vote is now closed. Thank you. Okay, with that being said, that concludes today's business. I remind you that if you have written testimony on today's items, you may submit it to land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. Once again, that is land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. Please indicate the LU number or the project name in the subject heading. I would like to thank the applicants, members of the public, my colleagues, subcommittee council, land use staff, and Sergeant Arms for participating in today's hearing. This meeting is hereby adjourned. Thank you.